Hey, good morning. Hey, good morning, Brian. How are you doing today? I am doing great. How are you? Absolutely fantastic as my dog moans behind me. My dog is with me at all times, so you know this is going to be a subject that we can both relate with here. <laughs> yeah. In fact, our trainer says do not let your dog sleep with you, but she does. She's my baby. Yes, when you put your dog in the car, um, there are some do's and don'ts. And the do's and don'ts may be more than just how they socialize. Like, that's one thing. I think a lot of people let their dogs sleep in the same room as them or in the bed, you know. Um, but in this particular case, some of the travel tips, it can keep the dog safe or not. Like, when you bring the dog in the car, they should really be harnessed into the car in some way, yeah. like through the seatbelt system or something like that. And also, we don't want to let the dog stick their head out the window at high speed because even though the dog may like that, it could be dangerous for the dog in case they got hit by something or a bug or a rock or dust or a car accident or something like that. Another thing that drives me totally crazy, Brian, people who put their dogs in the just freaks me out. No, that's a big no. I mean, you wouldn't put your kids back there. Yeah. And there's a couple reasons for that. It's For one thing, it's not safe. You can't control, like, what if they see something and that they have to just, they got to go explore and they dart out of the truck, even at a stoplight. And even if they are secured into the bed of the truck, like you don't, you can't, it's hard for you to monitor what's happening with them. Are they hurt? Did, did they get tangled up in the, in the, in the leash or the harness? Like that, it's just, it's one of those things where you see it, oh, look, what a, you know, what a dreamy idea, but it's not best for them. Also, the height of trucks, most trucks that high off yeah. the down from the tailgate is also hard on the dog's bones and their mm. joints. Mm. Mm. One of the things that Jazzy is when she's wherever we travel, going being or going just just to Home Depot, she is so territorial in that car. Is that natural or is she just yeah. being a freak? It's natural because she's protecting you. Like, she's sort of saying, like, hey, don't come near you. Um, what we notice with our dog is that, like, when we're with him and he's on a leash, he's a lot more aggressive. When he's when he's by himself, like when he goes to a place to be bored, he's perfectly fine. Yeah. So it's us that he's protecting. It's not that he's bad socially. He just sees the need to protect his home and his and his family. One of the things that's taking place with our dogs is that we like to take them to those little short journeys, whether it be Charleston, South Carolina, or Gatlinburg, the dogs are always with us. But I always make sure that yeah. people do not come up and pet the dog. Is I mean, I, I want to be safe. I don't want her to even snap at anybody. Yeah. Yeah, that's wise. Um, and also just leaving the dog unattended in a car in general is a bad idea. Yes. So you kind of have to have them with you. And when you're going to have the dog in the car, I think what you're sort of getting at in a roundabout way is that you can't just wing it when you're bringing your dog on a trip. Like, you have to plan for some of this stuff. If it's just going to be you and the dog by yourself, well, how are you going to use the restroom? Yep. How are you going to eat? Like, those are things that you need to think of. What about changing the diet for the dog? Because I, I once had a Chinese crested that, that she hated going for car rides. I mean, there, there was vomit all the time. Well, okay, so here's the thing. It's quite possible that some dogs can just get car sick, and you have to figure out how you can go on smaller trips to get them um, used to that. Another thing that misses a mistake that people make is they rarely take their dog in the car other than what's the one thing you always take your dog in the, the car vet. for? The vet. Right. So they, so they immediately have this association with, Anytime I get in that car, someone's going to be messing with me, poking me, <laughs> sticking me, right? So you're all of a sudden, dogs aren't dumb. They know what's coming. So if you take some smaller fun trips, then they can get used to it. So in a way, you're saying that dogs do remember their road trips. Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah, dogs are smart. That's for sure. Um, but if you do that, and then you can get them used to it, um, Another thing you can do is dogs that are nervous travelers, if you have a way to give them a T-shirt of yours, say that a T-shirt that you've already worn for one day, put that by them and that might and that calms them a little bit because they know that you're nearby. In this day of modern day technology with streaming, one of the things that we do with Jazzy when we're traveling is that we actually listen to the dog channel so that she relaxes. That is that a good tool? Yeah. Um, you know, what it turns out is that there's certain types of music that dogs like. Um, simple piano music, yes. um, 
almost like soft, like soft adult contemporary type stuff. What dogs don't like is loud, heavy metal, you know, uh, they also don't like the sound of a lot of human conversation. They like your voice and to talk to them directly, but there are certain types of music that the dogs don't like. So anything that you would consider to be soothing or simple, that's probably better for listening to in the car. Uh, when you're with your dog. See, that explains why she freaks out in the kennel when I put it on talk radio. Because if I'm not talking, who the hell's in my house? <laughs> that's, that's totally fair. Um, I don't know. I don't know where that leaves us with 80s. I don't know. We're going to make, make a compromise there. We might have to find a way to get the dog used to it. Now, the when people are out traveling around, we, I mean, we're still talking about the summer months, and it's it's scalding hot still here in the south. What about protecting our dog's feet when we're out there hiking around in the mountains? Because that dirt can get hot, too. It can. So what you have to do is, just like everything else we've been talking about, you got to plan ahead. There are things that you can put mittens type of things on the dog's paws if you want to do that. But honestly, that takes away the natural grippiness and the natural ability for them to use the way their feet work. So maybe going earlier in the day is better. Yeah. Maybe going um, later in the day is better when the sun's not shining directly on the trail. And like you said, even asphalt just in the parking lot can be hot. Yeah. And that could scorch the dog's paws. I love the research that you guys have put into this, Brian, because you even go into what kind of a car should I be driving? What what should we be doing to make the trip easier for the dogs? Yeah, so the type of car you get really would be preferably like a wagon or an SUV, yeah. maybe a minivan. The reason for that is they're typically, the minivans are low to the ground, wagons are low to the ground. If you have a large dog, you may have to get a large SUV like a <laughs> Nissan Armada or Chevy Suburban. I mean, that's just, imagine if you had a Great Dane. You're not going to be able to put a Great Dane, at least not too effectively, in the back seat of a Toyota Yaris. It's just not going to work, right? So even though the SUVs sit high off the ground, you can get a ramp to make it easier for them to get in and out of the vehicle. Yeah. Um, and then we also say Subaru Foresters and Subaru Outbacks are great. I don't know if most people know this or not, but Subaru, they have, you know how they have dogs in their commercials? Yep. It's, they go way beyond that. They give a lot of money every year to dog-friendly causes, and wow. they compel all of their dealerships to partner with a local animal rescue in that city. Wow. Where can people go to find out more information? There's got to be a website, Brian. Yes. Uh, you can go to AutoTrader, and the specific address would be autotrader.com slash best dash cars. And you can find a list of articles, including this one, right there on that page. I love it. Please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you, Brian. I'd love to. Thank you so much.